Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 87 of Lab Padres, SpaceX, and Starbase Weekly Updates. With the next Starship orbital flight coming up real soon, we've got a lot of action going on down here, so let's dig in. Early Friday saw Ship 26 staged for its return to the build site, rolling towards the entrance to Highway 4. Once the path was clear, SpaceX's LR-11000 was brought over to the orbital launch mount to aid work on Booster 9. After the crane arrived at the launch pad, the LR-11000 was hooked up to the load spreader and connected to the booster's hot stage ring. The hot stage ring was then removed from Booster 9, giving crews access to the protected parts on the top of the first stage of the rocket once again. Ship 26 departed the launch site that afternoon, traveling down Highway 4 to the build site. While it was at the launch site, Ship 26 was used to demonstrate a deorbit-like burn for future flights. New facilities are continuously being developed down here for Starship production. A new engine installation stand and elevator floor were brought to Mega Bay 1, starting with the floor elevator. Shortly after midnight on Saturday, the main ring of the engine installation stand arrived at Mega Bay 1. This new stand is equipped with booster holding clamps and guide rails for the elevator deck. After being removed the day before, the hot stage ring was lifted into place with the LR-11000 and reinstalled on Booster 9 while crews helped align and affix the ring on a lift. The new building in Boca Chica Village has become a major hub for pipework preparation. More pipe and fittings arrive every week and complete pipework sections can often be seen being welded up inside the building. Much of this pipework is destined for the orbital tank farm upgrades, but somehow may also be for Massey's and elsewhere. On the perimeter of SpaceX's launch site property, a new expanded retaining wall continues to rise. The footings for the candy leveled walls have been extended to the edge of Highway 4 and have begun to wrap around more of the launch site. The new concrete wall should be more resistant to impact and help keep any debris inside the launch site. After the first integrated flight test, several pieces of debris penetrated the old shipping container fence and around the property. Various pieces of insulated and uninsulated pipe continue to be brought to the launch site as crews continue to install new pieces of equipment. Primary structural framing of the new building at Massey's appears to be complete and exterior wall cladding support pieces are being installed. After a quiet start to the week, Wednesday saw the on-site crane at Massey's test site connected to the S24.2 payload bay test article. Back at the launch site, crews made ready to once again stack Starship 25 onto Booster 9, giving engineers a chance for another fit check and another opportunity for a photo op. While the FAA has finished its safety review of Starship, the Fish and Wildlife Service's reviews are still in progress and SpaceX is still waiting for a permission to fly. While SpaceX waits for its amended launch license for the second integrated flight test, crews continue to perform pre-flight checks on the ship and booster. The lower chine covers were removed on Booster 9, exposing the high-pressure gas handling equipment that supplies spin-start gases for the turbo pumps on the 13 inner engines. The covers were reinstalled on Thursday. The entrance to the test stand tank farm and new parking lot has been dug up again to install rainwater culvert pipes. These connect to the roadside gutter along the front of the launch site to the outfall just beyond the retaining wall. All cryo deliveries to the tank farm have been redirected through the main gate and right around test stand B while this work is done. Behind the build site, the pressurized human landing system nose cone test article is resting on a concrete pad at the end of the Tiki Bar Garden. Test article 24.2 was installed into the structural test frame on Thursday where it will be subjected to flight-like loads to verify that the hull is still strong enough with the doors added. Work platforms on the ship quick disconnect arm were retracted as workers prepared to destack the ship once more. Cones had already been deployed on the pad for the keep out zone. A few minutes later, the umbilical and interface panel were retracted from the ship. Starship 25 was then destacked from the booster with the chopsticks carefully lifting the ship up before swinging outwards from the launch mount and lowering the ship onto the awaiting stand. In total, the destacking operation took about 45 minutes to complete. 
Production of the Starship fleet continues over at the build site as Ship 32's midlock section was moved into High Bay for stacking. The Fish and Wildlife Service has been on site throughout the week, overseeing the removal of debris and shattered concrete from the salt flats around the launch site. Crews have been working carefully with the skid loaders and other small pieces of equipment to remove the larger pieces while disturbing as little of the ground as they possibly can. As the current phase of the Star Factory expansion nears completion, the construction work continues to grow in scope. Construction has reached interior outfitting and exterior cladding, with bridge cranes now visible inside the halls. Insulated exterior panels are being installed outside the factory, and the cladding has already reached its second level. Meanwhile, the footings for the next phase of the building are going in, as the new factory gradually grows to surround the one remaining tent from the original factory. The new development along Tarpon Haven is still in the foundation building phase, with more steel going in for the lowest level of the new structures. Gravel is also being laid down in front of the new buildings. A large number of boxy tube frame sections for two interior elevators have been pre-assembled and staged outside of Mega Bay 2 and are gradually being brought over for placement by the LR-11000 and then added to the inside of the new building. Over in Florida, Falcon 9 Booster 1080 was laid onto the horizontal transporter. The booster will be heading back to Roberts Road for refurbishment ahead of a future fifth flight. Tuesday saw Falcon 9 Booster 1077 launch on its eighth mission carrying the Starlink Group 6-25 mission and its payload of Starlink V2 minis into low Earth orbit. Crosby Skipper towed a short fall of Gravitas to sea in support of the Starlink Group 6-26 mission, which took place on November 3rd. On Wednesday, SpaceX support ship Doug departed Port Canaveral and headed out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 6-26 mission. Support ship Bob returned to port with both fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-25 mission that evening. Early on Thursday morning, Doug unexpectedly returned to port, seemingly for emergency repairs on a mission-critical system. After a six-hour turnaround and repairs apparently completed, Doug departed Port Canaveral once again. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.